Have you ever heard that term WCAG just kind of thrown around in a meeting and you're nodding along, but you're not totally sure what it means for your work? Well, today we're going to demystify it. We're breaking down the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, the single most important framework for making the web actually work for everyone. Let's dive in. But first, let's just start with a really simple question. Is the website you're working on, the app you're building, or the content you're creating, is it truly open to everyone? How you answer that question, that gets right to the heart of why this stuff matters so much. You know, the easiest way to wrap your head around WCAG is with an analogy. Think about a physical building. It has a building code, right? It needs to have ramps and accessible restrooms, things that make it safe and usable for everybody. Well, WCAG is exactly that, but for the digital world. It is the blueprint for building websites and apps that are open to all. So what is it, officially? It stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and it comes from the World Wide Web Consortium. You know, the people who help standardize the entire web. Essentially, it is the globally recognized rulebook for making sure digital stuff works for everyone, especially people with disabilities. It really is the universal standard. But here's the thing. This standard didn't just appear out of nowhere. It's a living, breathing document that's had to grow and evolve right alongside technology. And looking at its timeline really tells that story. So way back in 1999, version 1.0 laid the groundwork. Then a huge leap forward came in 2008 with 2.0. This is the one that gave us the core principles we're about to talk about. A full decade later, 2.1 had to adapt to our mobile first world, adding rules for things like small screens and touch controls. And then, just recently, in October 2023, version 2.2 came out to make things even more inclusive. So what this timeline really shows us is that accessibility isn't some one-and-done checkbox. It's an ongoing conversation that has to keep up with our constantly changing world. Okay, so if you only remember one thing from all of this, please make it this part right here. Everything in WCAG, I mean everything, is built on four simple foundational principles. This is the absolute heart of the framework. These principles make up a really handy acronym, P-O-U-R, and this is going to be your new mental checklist. So first up, P is for perceivable. Can everyone see or hear your content? This is where things like alt text on an image are absolutely critical for someone using a screen reader, or captions on a video are a must for someone who is deaf. Next, O is for operable. Can everyone actually use it? Think about somebody who can't use a mouse. Can they get around your entire site, fill out a form, click every single button just using their keyboard? They have to be able to. Then we've got U for understandable. Is it clear? Is it predictable? This means using plain language, making sure your navigation makes sense, and having error messages that are actually helpful. And finally, R is for robust. Does it work with the tech people are using today and the tech that's coming tomorrow? This is all about writing clean code that a screen reader, a browser extension, or some brand new device can interpret without breaking. Perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. That's poor. Okay, so we've got the poor principles, but how do you actually know if you're hitting the mark? Like, how is this stuff even measured? Well, that brings us to the three levels of conformance. And what's really interesting is how this is all broken down. You have level A, which is the bare minimum. That's your starting point. Then you have level AAA, which is like the gold standard. But honestly, it's not always practical or even possible for all types of content. The one you really need to focus on is level AA. That is the sweet spot. It takes care of the biggest and most common barriers people face, and it's widely considered the legal and industry standard that most organizations are trying to hit. All right, so we've got the history, we've got the principles, we've got the levels. But what does all this actually mean for the work that you do day in and day out? Let's talk about why this matters. So let's boil it all down. What are the big takeaways? One, WCAG is the global standard. It's not optional. Two, PAR is your North Star for every decision you make. Three, level AA is the benchmark you should be aiming for. Four, and this is a big one, accessibility is an ongoing practice. It is not a one-time fix. And most important of all, the work you do, the code you write, the designs you create, it impacts real people every single day. Ultimately, this is all about empowerment. It doesn't matter if you're a developer, a designer, a manager, a content creator, it doesn't matter. Understanding these guidelines gives you the skills and the insight to build better, more inclusive, and just more human-centered work for everyone. So I'm going to leave you with this question to think about. What is one small change you can make today? Seriously, 
Maybe it's adding alt text to an image you're about to post. Maybe it's double checking the color contrast on a button you're designing. Or maybe it's just using clear headings in a document. The journey to a more accessible web starts with one small intentional step. What's yours gonna be?